What is up, everyone? It's almost lunchtime, and I'm smoking a pipe. So you know what that means. It's lunchtime live, an hour early. See if anyone jumps in today. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. What's up, Abby? So today we're going to have a chat with uh, Weaver, Eric Weaver of Sea Smoke Pipes. What am I smoking? I am smoking some Robert McConnell's Scottish cake in uh, my Peterson... What is this? Donegal Rocky 60, maybe? So let's bring Mr. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> My beard is looking good. Yo. All right. Let's uh let's go Eric Weaver. What's up, buddy? Hey, can you see me? I can see you. Can you see and hear me? Yeah, I can. One thing I don't like about this Instagram live is that it's it's vertical. I know. Like your phone, you can't move it to the horizontal, which I prefer. I'm with you. Cool. And so it, and then when I repost it on YouTube, it's a vertical or it's a vertical video, which as a uh, television guy, former television guy, irks the hell out of me. But yeah. Um, <laughs> oh well. What do you do? trying to figure out how to set my phone up. I was going to leave it charged in, but I can't really. Anyway, it's not important. We're live. How's it going? <laughs> I'm doing well. There's a bunch of people coming in here. Randy, Matthew, uh, Pipes Bros. Hey, guys. So I've been off for a couple weeks uh, of this lunchtime live stuff. Uh, we're, we're trying some market gardening. Uh, I don't, I, I'm hesitant to call it like farming because it's, you know, it's just a, a half an acre. Uh, we, we live on a half acre, so it's not major, but, um, the, uh, let me tell you, working at home has been a blessing because I don't think I could have done it without, um, working from home. Yeah. But I think we finally got everything in the ground except for cucumbers. Uh, cucumbers oh, yeah. like it a little warmer, so I have I haven't planted anything yet. I usually wait about another week, yeah, or so because the last frost date up here I think is like June fifth or sixth or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty nice this year, so we might get lucky. I tried. Uh, I was dumb and put in cucumbers two weeks ago and they all died it just got too yeah. cold at night yeah i'm so. probably only gonna put in uh potatoes and onions anyway that's <laughs> yeah i'm trying potatoes this year i've never done potatoes so i did some last year and they're really easy and uh fun they're really fun to dig up with the kids mm -hmm. you know at the end of the season that's they're a good just point a lot of fun i put in yeah but we did what did i do I got a bunch from a friend of mine who has a farm. He gave me a bunch of seed potatoes, you know, just a variety. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did fingerling potatoes, which are excellent. Uh, Yukon gold, some red potatoes, and then some big old russets. But we never ended up eating all those russets. They were so huge. Mm -hmm. So this year, I think I'm going to do pretty much just all fingerlings and uh, probably some little reds because we eat a lot of those. I planted just Yukon golds. Yeah, those are good. Um, I don't. I, honestly, I the seed potatoes I just got from Menards. Oh yeah. Oh, that'll so, work. Were we'll they labeled if, seed potatoes? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. They come in a in a in a bag. You can kind of see way back there. There's a bag of them. 
I've got extra seed potatoes if anybody wants any. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't take many, really, because mm -hmm. you can cut them up, you know. Right. And use right. all the different little eye, eyes or whatever. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah, that's on my radar, too. I'm going to plant that probably next weekend is my plan. Oh, shoot. I'll be right back. I got to go grab my coffee. Uh oh, go grab it. I'll talk. I'll I'll uh, I'll fill time. So uh, while Weaver's um, getting his coffee, uh, I am smoking some Robert McConnell's Scottish Flake. I really am enjoying this. If you guys have tried this, uh, let me know. Um, I guess it. It was a little hard to come by. It seems like people are carrying it again. Um, but it comes in a, a tin, and it's this gorgeous ribbon-cut tobacco. A little milder. I'm just chatting about uh, the, the Robert McConnell's Scottish cake. Oh, yeah. So I when I tried that one yet. When I got the tin, I was like, sweet, I love cake and, and um, uh, you know, flakes and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I was just going to say, so when I cracked open the tin, you know, it's Scottish cake, but it comes ribbon cut. Huh. Yeah, so, that's odd. I don't know. It, but either way, it tastes really good. It's uh, kind of a... A plum figgy, um, you know, it's dark Virginia's in Kentucky, so Kentucky being one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Uh, and a little bit of Perique, although I don't get a ton of the flavor of the Perique, maybe just a little bit of black pepper, but. Yeah, and this so... morning, I'm actually, didn't even have a pipe yet till now, so. Ooh. So it tastes real good, but I'm smoking <laughs> one of my uh, Rich Lewis Levats here. There you go. Kind of a, a large size Levat. And I'm smoking this uh, cowboy coffee by the Country Squire. I got how, a little. I, I how is a, it? It's really good. I got a sample of this from uh, Monty53 from Michigan. Tony, he's, in, um, he's on YouTube. Okay. But uh, it's really good. It's like Virginia with some Kentucky mixed in. And oh, interesting. It's yeah, it's tasty. It kind of has a a little bit of a cocoa ness to it, but it's um, yeah. not advertised as an aromatic. So I don't know if it's just like a a light topping or a, or if it's just the natural blend of the Kentucky and the Virginia. But hmm. I, I'm probably going to be ordering more of this stuff. Uh, have you had any other blends from Country Squire? I have yet to try any, um, but so, I see them quite often around. So far, I've only had this one and Shepherd's Pie, mm. and both of them are really good. Hmm. I wonder yeah. if they do they blend blend their owns or or do or their owns do they blend their own <laughs> or do <laughs> they uh, or are they relabeling? Yeah. Do you think Country Square? I think blends their own. I think that uh, what's his name, John David Cole or whatever. I think he pretty much blends his own, but. You know, I'm sure he's sourcing tobacco from some bigger blending houses and then coming up with his own concoctions. Right. As far as I know, anyway. Nice. Yeah, I, I got to get – I and they're just order from their website, right? It's not – Yeah. They're, yeah, they're I, more of a store, right? I mean, they're, they're a, a shop that also just ships their stuff. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I haven't ordered from them yet either. I listen to their podcast every – you know – not every week, but mm -hmm. every other week or whatever. And uh, yeah, but based on these two blends that I've got a sample of a couple of weeks ago, it's pretty good. All Briared Up says, uh, By the Fire from them is amazing. Hmm. And what's up, All Briared Up? Welcome to Instagram. Um, oh, we got Everett. Everett's on here too. Hey, Everett. Um, so the reason, well, first, before we get into the reason why I wanted to have a conversation with you, other than I just like talking to you in general, um, 
tell us a little bit about yourself, um, kind of what you're doing with uh, Sea Smoke Pipes and Pottery, and, uh, you know, the 20,000 view of Eric Weaver, 20,000 foot view. Um, well, let's see. Been smoking a pipe since I was 17. So that would have been back in about 1999, I guess. Um, yeah, so I got into pipe smoking. My grandpa passed away and I inherited a couple of his pipes. And um, I had been smoking cigarettes when I was a teenager and quit that cold turkey one day. And then about a year later, I ended up with these pipes and started smoking a pipe. Loved it. And uh, since then, I mean, I've just been learning more and more about pipes. I started, uh, first I started making pipes back in 2003. As uh, just like as a hobby, my, I was living in the Twin Cities at the time. I lived there mm -hmm. for about almost a year, about a year. And I saw a pipe kit in a little tobacco shop that used to be in Lilydale, Minnesota, oh, yeah. right there by yeah. the river. And my girlfriend bought it for me for my birthday. Now she's my wife, Audrey. <laughs> and uh, started whittling away on it, really liked it, and ended up getting another pipe kit and another pipe kit. And, you know, just using, like, knives and files and, <laughs> and real rough. Like, I remember clamping it down to my dorm room desk in college and hacking away at it <clears throat> so that's how i got into it <laughs> but you know i i have to say that uh that is is seems to be kind of a consistent story for a lot of like you got to start somewhere and these you know these little kits even the the pre-drilled ones oh yeah how, you know how else are you going to learn well you know, now yeah, go ahead. Um, nowadays, I would say it's a lot easier than back then. I mean, back then, I would find a kit in the occasional tobacco shop. You could order from Pimo Pipecraft, which now Vermont Freehand owns. But there wasn't, like nowadays, you can get a lot of stuff, order a lot right. of stuff a lot easier than you could then. Like, it was... And vast amounts of information. Oh, yeah, it's come a long way. That's it's awesome now. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we have so many pipe carvers these days is, you know, it's all at your fingertips to get mm -hmm. started. And uh, yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice being able to get materials now a lot more accessible. So you started hacking away in college. And is this so were you making pipes pre pottery or were you doing pottery long before that? Well, I did some ceramics in high school, but not so much pottery, doing more sculptural stuff in my high school ceramics classes. But um, no, I started making pipes first before I decided to go back to college up here in northern Wisconsin. I um, ended up chasing my girlfriend up here. She was going to college and up in Ashland. And so yeah. I moved up here and lived in this area for about a year before I decided to go back to school. And during that time was kind of when I was making my first pipes, you know, when I wasn't working, I was just kind of messing around. And um, yeah, then started going back to school, uh, ended up hanging out in the art department a lot, taking art classes and uh, mostly focusing on pottery and ceramics. But I did a lot of photography, printmaking, especially woodblock mm -hmm. printing I really liked, um, sculpture. I don't even remember what else, you know, yeah. a bunch of different stuff. But I was making pipes on the side kind of all the way through college and afterwards. Um, just kind of more like as a hobby, you know, some years I might make five, some years 20, some years, you know, 25. It was just kind of when I had the time and I would either keep them for myself, give them away, or kind of just sell them to people who kind of heard about me, knew about me. Yeah. You just answered the question I had was, were you selling any of them at the time? I was, but on a pretty smaller basis, and it was all kind of word of mouth, you know. I really sure. didn't start advertising myself as a pipe maker to the bigger pipe community till like, 
a few, like, I don't know, three or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So I was making pipes on a small level from 2003 on. Right. But it was kind of like, unless you, you knew me or, right, you know, right. you, didn't, you weren't going to, yeah, you know, because I wasn't putting my stuff out there as much. I was just kind of. What made you, what made, what was kind of that mind change for you um, when you decided to say, hey, I'm a pipe maker. Um, I'm going to sell, I'm going to take it seriously. Like what was that, that change for you? Well, a lot of it was just over the years, um, saving up money and slowly being able to buy some better secondhand equipment, you know, getting a lathe, getting a bandsaw, getting all these little tools put together and having a, a decent shop and yeah. just trying to figure out how to use them more, you know, and get getting the results that I liked. I mean, I, my pipes before, they were pretty good, I think, at least some of them, you know, they were decent, but just have being able to buy a few more tools and, and um, up until about not quite two years ago, I was, I worked for a company that fixed up um, log cabins, log mm -hmm. homes. Yep. So I did, I did that for a decade and, um, you know, put food on the table, paid the bills, supported the family, all that. And, but the good thing about that job is I had the winters off. Mm. So I'd get laid off in the winter. And during that time is when I would focus on doing my pottery work um, and doing more pipe making and just developing more muscle memory and kind of getting my pipes to the to the point where I, I thought, well, these are at least as good as half of the stuff I see on the market. Right, you right. Know? So, you know, I just, I always wanted to, to put my stuff more out there, but I guess I kind of felt like from all the stuff I was reading about pipe makers and different things in Pipes and Tobacco Magazine and all this stuff, you know, I just kind of felt like I needed to really work on it for quite a while before putting my stuff out to the bigger market. You know, I was sure. more than happy to sell stuff to friends and family and, and other random people that heard about me. But as far as like putting my stuff out there to the bigger, you know, pipe community or whatever, um, yeah. I just wanted it to be something that, you know, yeah. was pretty good. Right. So, well, I think it's, I think your pipes are more than pretty good. I think they're gorgeous. Um, but I'm curious too, like what were, what were some of your, when you were first starting out going full time in the, in the, cause you're doing this full time, right? I mean, this is your. Well, sort of, I mean, this year with, with my, that was my plan was to be able to be working full time at doing this stuff. But with the COVID happening, it was kind of, a blessing and a curse because we have the kids home working, you know, doing the school from home. So I'm kind of mm -hmm. supervising that a little bit and getting down in the shop, like when they're doing their homework. So I'm, my attention's a little pulled away, right. but right. I am down here pretty much every day, you know, at least for a few hours, but I'm not, I'm not putting in eight hour days every day. Well, but that's right. the beauty of owning your own business too. Yeah. You know, you can, you can pick what, and choose, but when you were first starting out, what were some of the big obstacles that you felt you had to get through? Well, money. Like starting out. Well, okay, there you go. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> and, and that still is really a big obstacle. I mean, it's, um, again, that's a, one of the things where in the last whatever year and a half, um, with me deciding to get out of the the employment that I was doing with fixing up log homes. I wanted to be home more. Um, you know, I didn't want to be working on the road as much. And um, and with COVID, I was planning on leaving that job anyway before COVID, but then COVID happened too. So that kind of gave me more of an excuse to stay home. Yeah. You know, and not like, go try to get another part-time job yeah. and my wife's my wife is working now so she's you know making a little some money um but you know up here 
uh, the e economy is always depressed, you know, right. so you right. can make it on not a lot of money, but it's hard to make much money. money. So right, right. Yep. Well, and that's small town. I think that so often the people that hold the microphone in all the media worlds come from these large cities where I think that majority of us uh, don't live in a huge city. You know, if you take oh, yeah. the whole population of the United States, you know, obviously there's a great concentration of people in the cities, but I think, you know, like, like you had just said that more often than not, most of us can identify with living in a community that's not, maybe not depressed, but it's certainly not a large city economy. Right. Yeah. You know. And now with the internet, I mean, it's been like Instagram and YouTube and whatever. It's just like you can kind of take your products more to the people a little bit without going, you know, going through middle, you know, retailers, which uh, I would love to do some stuff with retailers, but it's not as necessary right now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been a big help as far as like, you know, getting my, my work out there more and, and also just connecting more with the pipe community. I mean, before a few years ago, I didn't really even realize how big it was because where I live, there's like uh, maybe a handful of pipe smokers I know of, maybe. Right. You know? Right. So when you um, kind of getting to, so the larger question that I want to want to tackle a little bit about it, because you do other art and you, I think you are, um, I would also call you an artist. Um, I kind of want to make uh, the, or, or flesh out your connection between pipe making and art. Um, and I, I know that, you know, you uniquely, maybe not uniquely, but in watching your videos and the conversations that we've had that, um, you know, you've done a lot of research. Uh, when you were showing your pipe book collection, I was like, holy cow, man, that's, that's pretty, um, you know, there's just not that many books out there about pipes. And, and, you know, I think you've put a lot of thought and time into it. And so um, for, we can, we can tackle that question front end um, in what you, what you feel um, art is and um, is, is a pipe a work of art or is it a functional tool or some blend of both? Yeah, those are good questions, you know, because that brings up the question of art or craft or, you know, a blending of the two. And, you know, a lot of people have different, different definitions of art. Some people think it's just something you put on the wall or, you know, you appreciate aesthetically or whatever. But <clears throat> I think art is, for me, art is all about the process. Mm and craft work too. Um, you know, the end result, of course, is, is great. But for me, it's all about the process. That's what I enjoy the most. That's, I enjoy that more than the finished product is just keeping busy doing something. And um, I guess my goal with my work, whether it's pipes or pottery or anything else I do is you want it to look effortless. Not that it didn't take a lot of work to put in it, but you, you kind of want these creations that you make, whether, whether it's music or photography or whatever, you want it to, to mm -hmm. kind of look like it's something that's so natural to you, even if you've worked for decades at it, mm -hmm. you know, that it just becomes a byproduct of who you are or what you are. And in that way, it expresses, it expresses that mm -hmm. and it would create something that is, that resonates with other people. You know, there, there has to be a communication 
a dialogue with any kind of art to the viewer or the appreciator or you know the user right. or whatever it is you know you want you want them to be able to pick up that pipe that you made and and you know kind of get a, a sense of what your mood was at the time when you made it um so that's important to me is i want the work to reflect the process that i put in but i also want it to seem like like it just kind of flows out of me or whoever you know sure yeah I mean, an I think extension it, of the maker it's hard to put into of, words anytime we speak about art because art I guess in my opinion, and you tell me what you think, I think art, A, is, is so subjective, um, but B, it's, I, I think it's a feeling, you know, yep. and it's hard, it's hard to put into words um, how something feels and what, what, what we end up doing is, is creating a lot of metaphors for that. I mean, look at, you know, since people could put down words on paper uh, I think they've been trying to describe what love is right. you know what I mean and it's all yes. a bunch of, of metaphors but I think you're I think you are expressing or I feel like you're expressing um, a way of looking at at a pipe that I, I have not thought about before the whole effortless natural um, I don't want to call it a concept, but you know, that, that feeling yeah. of, of, you know, somehow this, this tool has flowed out of this piece of wood. And I think I see that a lot like right. in, in your style. I see that. Um, I see those, the <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's hard. I want to say natural lines, but mm -hmm. you know, it's it's um, it's a very flowing. Um... Yeah, it, I, my shapes are usually a little more organic. Even if I'm doing a classic shape, I'd I'd say that there's there's something in it that flows a little more naturally, and it's it's something that I actually don't talk a whole lot about because. Um, a lot of people th think about art and they automatically have this preconceived notion of like pretentiousness and you know yeah. when, when, when I was talking about a dialogue not only is it a dialogue between the maker and uh, you know the person who buys that piece of art or that pipe or pottery or maybe pays for that CD or download of music but it's also the dialogue and the interaction between the maker and the the medium, mm. whatever it is, right? And with pipes, um, you're always working. You need to always work with the briar, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah, you can do standard shapes and press your will on that block of wood, <laughs> but it just seems to, the finished product seems to be a lot better if you if you, are paying attention to obviously grain, um, you know, and trying to leave yourself open, you know, to me, I try to leave myself very open to, you know, I have my I rough idea of what I want to make. Like it might not be super defined. I might just have in my mind, I want to make a volcano mm. and I'll look through my briar and I'll find a block that I think, <clears throat> This this will, you know, make a nice volcano. It's going to have nice bird's eye on the top and bottom, um, whatever I'm looking for. And from there, I'll usually, I don't even always put marks on the briar at all, except for the, dra the holes. And I'll usually drill first, just because that's how I've always done it. I've done a few um, where I've shaped and drilled later, but I'd like to practice that more, but that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> but, you know, and then from there, I got the holes drilled and I might start the top of the pipe on the lathe, depending on the shape, you know, just to get a, a good round. But later I might even make that totally different on the. Right, right. Standard. 
And then from there, it's, it's you know, sitting there in front of the, the grinding wheel, the disc sander, and just kind of shaping. And uh, I get the most satisfaction out of the pipes that, and any kind of thing that I'm working on, whether, whether it's pottery or if I'm just messing around on my banjo or something, I get the most satisfaction out of the pipes that they seem to make themselves you know mm, the ones yeah. the ones that didn't seem like work or didn't fight me mm -hmm. you know like they they spring spring into existence sort of and i i'm just a tool of some sort as well that is um trying to bring that out and you know i mean i've made plenty of ugly pipes too but it's just I like to be very open to the process in the in the material itself. And with pottery, the way I make pottery too is a lot like that. I I usually throw pretty quickly. I I don't go for super symmetrical lines just because that gets boring to me. Sure. Um, I mean, there's there's absolute beauty and precise, perfect symmetry, but to me, it's not as exciting. Um, so when I think about art or even craft or whatever, even when I was make when I was working on log cabins, it's about the process for me because my, you get addicted to the feeling of creation, being involved in that creation and being in that, you know, you get in the zone, right? So it doesn't matter if it's sports or music or whatever your thing is, right? Maybe it's working on cars, right? Like Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance or whatever, whatever the heck it is. You know, you can yeah. go into a whole discussion about all that kind of thing. But it's a similar flow state or whatever people say, right? Right. You know, that that's where I want to be like all the time, basically, is where you're, you're so hyper-conscious that you're you're completely in your subconscious you know it's kind of that weird duality of mm -hmm. you're drawing upon all these different influences and inspiration but it's it's in that exact moment where you're not necessary or you're thinking so much you're not thinking you know mm -hmm. where it's where it's it's a part of you but you're not you know, if you analyze things too much, you kill them. Right. right? So that's why it's hard to talk. <laughs> Which is about. exactly what we're doing right now. <laughs> I know. I know. And this is why I try not to do it a lot. It's interesting stuff, but it's it's also hard to describe. Right. You know. Well, it's I think. Like, yeah, go yeah, ahead. I think that I, I I think what you're describing is um, well, I think pipe smoking lends itself to this anyways. Um, but it, it, it can be for a lot of people, a form of meditation. Um, you know, and, and like when I, when I sit and meditate, the whole point is to, um, to clear out all the thoughts and think nothing, you yep. know what I mean? Yep. And, um, and when I do, you know, as you know, I, I, I do photography, um, <laughs> And oftentimes I find there's a point in a photo shoot where everything's happening. Um, people are working, but there's kind of this silence that happens. And you can tell right in that moment mm -hmm. when um, everyone is just in their place creating, creating, um, yep. and it's second nature you know, um, but the only, the only way I can describe it is there's, there's just become, like you said, there's this, this thing where you kind of become one with what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I think when we create things uniquely, um, that, that, that is like the addiction that we, uh, or or the dragon that we chase, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like you, I, I don't know about you, but I can totally tell. Like 
if I'm sitting down and working on whatever I'm working on, um, whether it's a painting or if it's, it's editing a photo or whatever, and if I'm thinking too much, uh, I'm never satisfied. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you can kill it. You can kill the moment pretty quick. You know, it's like, like I used to take a lot of, you know, do a lot of photography myself and it's really great, but like with our phones nowadays, of course you can take pictures of everything, but you got all these people just walking around trying to capture this moment, but then they're not in the moment, you know? So that's kind right. of an example of where you can kind of kill the moment and not just Right. Enjoy putting it. down your phone and actually being present to it. Yeah. And actually in news, um, when I worked in news, that was, that was a big thing that we talked about a lot was, you know, I can't tell you how many bodies that I've seen, like been in the presence of, but as soon as I put my eye to that lens, it was this barrier. I wasn't there. I was the camera. Right. You know what I mean? And so there's like this disjointed, mm -hmm. you know, thing that happens that that and, you're yeah. right it can take you out of the moment as well yeah but it's you know and the thing talking about trying to make it seem effortless it takes a lot of effort to right train your your mind and your muscle get develop whatever muscle memory you know it takes it takes years um some some people a lot sooner, some people a lot longer, you know, depending. <laughs> but um, where you end up with this whole encyclopedia in your brain of either images or, you know, information that you've consumed, like through, you know, magazines or books or whatever you read on the internet, you know. So for me, when <clears throat> people have asked about, like, my inspirations and influences in fight making, it's hard to point to one person yeah. because everything I've ever read about it, every pipe maker I've ever read about or any picture of a pipe I've ever seen or any pipe I've smoked or handled is all part of this collection in my mind that I draw upon. Mm -hmm. And it might, it might not be like, oh, you know, there's a specific pipe, I'm gonna make a pipe just like that, but it's in there. And so when I'm working, it, it might be just be a half a second where I'm doing something and then, you know, I'm like, oh, well, what if I, you know, if I do this, you know, and yeah, mm -hmm. you can go back and look at these books and see it where it's all, you know, nothing's new under the sun, basically, right. you know, right. my shapes are pretty unique, but there's tons of people that have made things, you know, just as unique or, or probably with some similar features. So I would definitely suggest to anybody interested in pipes and especially people that want to become pipe makers is to get as much information as you can, especially, especially the written word, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Like if you can get some of these old pipes and tobacco magazines on eBay, buy as many as you can, or, you know, there's some wonderful books out there and just learn as much as you can about the history of it and your appreciation for it, whether even if you're just smoking a pipe or collecting a pipe, you know, will be so much, so much bigger and it, it will, you know, influence whatever you're working on often without you even re realizing it. Well, you know, right. Knowledge I mean, it's, is power. It's the same reason why I've got, um, I don't know, hundreds of books of photography, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's just, it's different photographers, prints and, and whatever it is. But every time you, you put your eye behind a lens, um, you know, I've looked at those photos and, and now, you know, if I see, if I see something, it's really, it's training your eye to look, you know, yeah. and, and, and I think the same can be said about, um, pipe making and, and especially consuming information. But I think the, the written word, but also books with pictures. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, it's, I, yeah, printed physical stuff I find more helpful 
Um, oh, then the internet. Then yeah. the, the internet is awesome for sure. Yeah. But you know, just for some reason, yeah, printed printed stuff, images or text. Um, well, our our brain is is I think it's scientifically proven. Our brain processes and stores in the information that we read in a book or look at physically differently than we do on a screen. Right. And yep. so um, I'm a big proponent. Proponent. <laughs> like my wife reads Kindle all the time. I still buy all my books. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I'll listen to some audio books, but well, other, right, yeah. Other than that, yeah. Mainly because I refuse to listen to radio. So normally on on uh, on my commutes or whatever, I, I pop in an audio book. Yeah. Um, but yeah. you know, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to, you know, I, I don't, I think I've heard this somewhere. I might be, I don't remember who said this, but you know, when it comes to like art, I can't tell you what it is, but I know it when I see it. Right. 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 And so I guess it's my opinion that art is whatever you might think, whatever a person might think it is, right. you know, if you see it and it connects with you, you know, then that to you, that's, some form of art it resonates with you there's something human about it that you connect with right and you know they do call it the art of pipe smoking as right. well right so well there's an art to that too yeah and it, and it takes years you know you might only be smoking a pipe for six months and you're really enjoying it but wait six years you right. know wait 10 years wait 20 years you know this is a this is a long-term game <laughs> it's know? like raising kids Oh yeah, and it just <laughs> it it can it, there's so many different areas that you can go it, as just a pipe smoker through the years of trying different kinds of blends, trying different shapes. You'll get into one thing for a while, then you'll move into something else. Then you might jump back to the previous thing, you know. And it's, right. I find it so rewarding that way. It's for me, it's all about freedom, right? You know. And that's why I like to have a lot of options. I like to have a lot of pipes. I like to have a lot of tobacco, you know, <clears throat> and it's the same with making things. It's chasing that feeling we're talking about of, cre of creating. It's also just chasing that feeling of, of freedom mm -hmm. to be able to do what you want or experience, you know, pick and yeah. choose. You know, I mean, I could get by on very few things. I'm not a picky person but I enjoy the full spectrum of, right. of things, you know? So anyway, that's just a thought. I like that. I like that chase, uh, wanting the freedom and, and um, fostering a sense of freedom. I think that when maybe you talk to um, many different artists that, that, that is part of the feeling that they're chasing. It's this yeah. freeing of, of whatever is inside of you and putting it out you know, that, that can also be the scariest part of being yeah. an, an artist is um, because it's not yours anymore. Once it's, once it's, um, once you, you've done your process and you've made it and you've presented it out, um, now it's not yours, right. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll put that. Um, well, kind of along there. those same lines with, with making something for me with pottery or pipe making, which are the two main things that I do these days. Um, it's uh, getting away from this feel, this idea of like preciousness, right? Mm -hmm. So some, I've known some makers in the past that they're really good at what they do, but then they have a hard time getting rid of that item Sure. For me, especially with the pottery, once I've made the pottery, yeah, I, I keep certain items for myself, but most of it, I just, I want it gone mm. um, because it's not about having more and more and more of these items that I've made and, and petting it and all my precious and you know what I mean? It's <laughs> totally, yeah. For me, it's about, okay, now I'm going to start another one because I'm, I'm chasing that process and learn and learning more and more as I do it and, and getting the rewards that way versus having the physical reward of the, the end product. I, right. I, I get a much more satisfaction from creating the item and putting it out there and having someone else hopefully like it. 
Well, yeah, that's the difference between the artist and the consumer, though. You know, the consumer yeah. it, it wants the end product, and the artist, you know, it, the consumer is wants the end product, and they're in love with the end product. And mm -hmm. I and like you had said earlier, I think the artist obviously loves the the end result, but um, pays more attention and is more focused on the creation of it um, rather than keeping, yeah. you know, the, your goal, I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, it sounds like your goal when making pipes isn't necessarily to make, have, have a pipe at the end of the day. I mean, it pays the bills, but um, the satisfying part of making a pipe is the making of. Yeah, for, for me, that's my focus is, is definitely the process of the making. And I mean, I appreciate pipes. I have plenty of pipes. I, mm -hmm. I get more, uh, it's more rewarding for me to use pipes made by other people. I mean, I have some of my own pipes that I love. A lot of them are like shop seconds for one reason or another. And I love smoking those pipes. There's a lot of satisfaction of smoking a pipe you've made yourself for sure. But like, like this, you know, Rich Lewis out of Minneapolis, this is just a, a classic, you know, mm -hmm. that. And he makes these wonderfully. I love smoking these pipes and other pipes I have from different makers. I find that more inspirational and with pottery too. I mean, I have plenty of my own pots, but the ones that I like the most other people have made because those are more inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need to sit and look in a mirror all day long. You know, I want to see what else is going on out there and <clears throat> finding other people's work that I connect with. So do you find I, it, do you find it kind of vain in the sense of like keeping your own creations? No. I mean, if you sit around talking saying that they're the best in the world, then yeah, but <laughs> you know, it's, I just find it more rewarding to use other people's, work mm. i guess um i mean i love my pipes too they're they're great but also when you have your own work around you always see the little flaws that you can sure. you know you can be really yeah it's kind of a constant reminder of what you yeah wish you would have done and and after a long period of time you kind of get away from that you know like i remember being in like junior high high school trying to draw a picture and other people probably thought it was good, but you know, when you're that age, you're just super critical of yourself. And so I would just ruin things and throw a damn temper tantrum <laughs> about, you know, this isn't good enough for now. Now I realize that that's all part of the process and that off, you learn more from your mistakes. And a lot of times those mistakes can lead to discoveries mm. and bring you to, you know, a lot of some pipe shapes and, and, and uh, pottery and stuff that I'm most happy with are ones that actually started out as a screw up. But sure. one, th what, but one thing about that screw up was interesting enough that I then duplicate that in the next piece and expand upon that idea. Like, oh, th this mm. is you know, ninety percent of this is shit, mm -hmm. but this one thing right here is interesting enough to explore. Interesting, you know? yeah. Well, it kind of keeps you humble in that sense as well. You know, it's, um, I think what you just said, is, it can be applied to life in general, you know, like where you make a mistake in life, it's not always, that's the end all be all, you know, mm -hmm. that's, it's the learning experience. And then, you know, maybe one part of that mistake was actually good. And, and yeah, oh yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a, it's a little snapshot into that whole thing. And yeah. uh, pipe smoking in general is a good uh, metaphor for that, you know, especially for us that are involved in it. You know, I think it, it lends itself because you're slowing down. You're trying, mm -hmm. you're kind of, you know, s stepping back a little bit and letting things ruminate in your mind. And, um, you know, it, it just helps to, you got to be able to step back from yourself. And like I was talking about with the work or the pipes or the pottery or whatever, I mean, obviously I want every pipe I make to, you know, it's was part of me, at least in that moment that I made it. 
but at the same time, in order to become confident enough to put it out there, you do have to disconnect yourself from it at the end and realize that even if it's not 110% perfect or what you started out with, that it's just one point in the process, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that it's about the next one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about the next one. You're, you're chasing perfection, but you're not fixated on perfection. Sure. You know? Sure. I, in my pottery work, I, I usually kind of work in more of uh, like an Asian kind of Japanese style of sorts, <clears throat> I guess you'd say, which you can compare that to, I guess, kind of more Danish or or the Japanese um, or Asian aesthetic of, of pipe making too, where you're kind of going for the wabi-sabi kind of perfect imperfection kind of thing you know like asymmetrical balance is very intriguing to me you know you know a perfect billiard or lavat like this of course you can't argue with it it's beautiful it, it follows all the rules right you know and i'm not taking away from that because there's a lot to be said about it go ahead and make your eight thousand billiards if you want and perfect that that's cool but if you can consistently make a asymmetrical item, whether it's pottery or pipes or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, where if you can get that balance on something that's not balanced, but, some, uh, but yeah, somehow yeah. it works, I mean, to me that, I just love that. And I like the idea of, um, you know, it's kind of like autumn, right? Autumn's my favorite time of the year. It's my favorite season. Mm. And one thing I like about autumn is um, a, lot, a lot of people get depressed in autumn because that they it reminds them that things are dying. Sure. You know, but they're not. They're actually at the height of their life. It's when they're coming into all the colors, you know, mm. and there might be a little <clears throat> whatever decay. But I find that more rewarding because it's like a life well spent. It's you know what I mean? And sure. So when it comes to like pottery or even pipes, I kind of like things that, especially obviously the handmade stuff, you, you see that human quality to it. And it, you know, you can go on a whole tangent on how that reflects to your own mortal self and blah, 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 and get all people can think that's all pretentious, but it's true. And <laughs> autumn. I don't know. That's my favorite season. And like with my pottery work, I, I really like wood firing. And yeah, wood firing, we talked about that before. Yeah, you can have so many flaws from the whole process and the material, you know, it's a different style of pottery where a crack in the pottery itself, a superficial crack, one that doesn't, it'll still hold water, but you know, that can make it all the more beautiful because it's not perfect, you know. So right. I guess that's well, isn't there a, isn't there a, is there a Japanese, is a Japanese or it, where there, there's an art of filling in cracks with yeah. gold or, or whatever it is. And, yep. and Kintsugi. Make, that's it. That's it. Um, but I, I'm really, as you said it, and this was a few comments back, but I've just, it's been ruminating in my head where, um, making something that's unbalanced feel balanced i i think is is um a really beautiful metaphor for for your style you know what i mean yeah i, I mean it's definitely i guess something that i've tried to internalize through the years and hopefully it comes out in in my work you know i think sometimes i'm successful sometimes maybe not but that's it's, that's the process though exactly and like i said for me art or craft or anything life i guess is it's all about that the process and trying to appreciate it as it goes by you know right which isn't always hard you know we're always just 
the sand's going through the hand, you know. It's right, just... <laughs> right. But it's... So in our last uh, in our last few minutes here, because um, I know you got to go and, and I've got to bring a kid to a doctor's appointment, but what I usually like to kind of end with, um, you know, where – where you think the pipe community is going and maybe some words of hope and what you're seeing and, and um, yeah, just what, what's, what's the future like? Well, aside from the ever present shadow of more taxes, which is nothing new <laughs> by the way, that every right. year we have a scare and one yeah. of these years it is going to happen. Aside from that, I mean, I think it's good. Um, especially with the internet, we can, we're so much more connected as far as realizing that there's more pipe smokers in the world. I mean, I went for years, I probably had like two or three people I knew that smoked a pipe, you know, back in the first decade of pipes, you know, half of the time I've right. smoked a pipe has basically kind of been in my own little bubble with a, a few other people that were kind of into it. And my only connection was like you know pipes and tobacco magazine at the time mm -hmm. but i mean now we got like this whole instagram pipe community the youtube pipe community i mean all kinds of other things that i don't even know about so that's right. very hopeful for me there's lots of young guys getting into it there's lots of old guys getting into it there's women getting into it there's people around the world you know into yeah. it and appreciating it. So I think it's really hopeful. There's more and more pipe makers every day. Sometimes I kind of don't even like looking on Instagram. I mean, I love it, but it's also like, man, you know, look at yeah. all these people, you know, yeah. and, there's, and there's so many great pipes out there and they're not all like people that have been doing it for decades. There's some people that only, have only been making pipes for like, you know, two years and they're making unbelievable work. Um, so I, I think it's a great time to be a pipe smoker, really. Yeah. Um, tobacco might get a little more expensive as time goes on, but I think in general, the average pipe smoker these days, it's not your, you know, Borkum Rift smoking velvet guy. I mean, plenty of people enjoy that and that's fine, but there people don't normally smoke the same blend right. all the time. And it's not just... It's kind of a craft beer kind of mentality. Right. It's, it, it, it's, it is more of a lifestyle than a addictive habit. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I think, I think it's really good. So I, I mean, I am pretty hopeful about it. Um, yeah. But I will say, seller your tobacco yeah. um, just in case, <laughs> because I've seen it, I've seen it firsthand when I used to work at a, a book slash pipe and tobacco shop. I saw it when the uh, roll your own cigarettes jumped up a crazy amount of taxes overnight. And uh, it's still, pipe smoking is still the most economical way to consume tobacco. You might spend a little bit on pipes, but they last right. forever. Right. So I think, right. it, I think it's, there's a lot of hope out there and a lot of cool new people getting into it and jumping on Instagram and doing this. I mean, look at us right now. We're just a couple of, midwestern dudes I know. uh dads you know <laughs> and we're on instagram and there's people watching us it's ridiculous you got you got like i don't know a couple thousand followers or more and it's like you're just some dude in that Minnesota. Exists. that's what I, I, you know i mean it I've blows known, me away i've known thousands of dudes that are you know and and that's one of the great things it's like a regular guy in this right. weird little community can have a little tiny bit of notoriety because right. you smoke a pipe and you know you might even not be the most knowledgeable about it but people still want to know what you have to say it's bizarre right. but I it is it. bizarre <laughs> it's so i live it with Eric. I it's so bizarre <laughs> but it's uh <laughs> it, i think it's <laughs> i think that says a lot about this community you know it's it's yep. Like I said, uh, like you just said, and I've said many a times, I, I'm, I'm a, a, I'm just a guy. Like I'm not a pipe maker. I'm not a. I don't do anything except smoke pipes, you know. And yeah. I, a year and a half ago, I posted, I, I started posting one picture a day, mm -hmm. and now yeah. it's it's grown into this. And and you know, the, my thought was, well, what 
what can I do for this community that's been so um, welcoming and amazing to me? And, you know, my skills are, are storytelling and, and that kind of thing. And so. Yeah. And, and videography, you know, you got that skill set that. Right. You know, works so well. what, what, how can I contribute? Uh, you know, some people, um, some people make pipes, some people blend tobaccos, some people sell all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and I thought, well, let's just start having a pipe with, with people and having conversations that maybe people want to listen to and join in, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it, it's uniquely amazing because um, unlike any other community, uh, I think that's maybe what this makes it. That's why we call it a community. You know, it's not yeah. a, it's not like a retail store trying to disseminate information with hopes that you buy a product. Right. You know, it's, it's really, um, it's really just a lot of conversations um, and people, it, you know, and anytime you bring art or craftsmanship or, or whatever it is into, into the community that um, I think is, it's welcomed with open arms and people for good or for worse uh, debate these, mm -hmm. these topics and, and um but yeah, getting back to what you just said, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. You know, there's a lot of people um, on here that are, are just, they're just people, yep. you know? Um, but we all, we all love to, to, to be in community with each other. So I think that the fact that we love the community um says a lot uh about our future you know yeah yeah no it's it is a special thing i've never encountered anything quite like it i mean there's plenty of awesome communities that are centered around different hobbies and stuff but the the pipe community is it there's such a variety of people but it seems like a lot of them are so open you know they have they seem to, of course, I'm biased in this regard, but they seem to be more open-minded about, you know, the full spectrum of things. And, you know, we like to show our pipes, but we're not necessarily showing off. It's not about, you know, right. well, look, I just paid X amount of dollars for this and that. It's not as much of a status thing. I mean, you are always going to have those kind of people, but I would say that versus even in the tobacco world versus some other types of tobacco usage. I just, I don't see that as much in, in the pipes, right. you know, it's a lot more about the community and, you know, hanging out and communicating and enjoying yeah. yourself and not necessarily about getting the next fancy thing and, and showing it off as much. I mean, there is that, but people aren't pricks about it, you know? <laughs> it's not like the cigar world. You know that have, have yeah. predicated well, themselves on be. living the good life, and it can be, of course. There's always exceptions, but well, mm -hmm. I am super grateful and uh, honored that you came on with me, and I appreciate your time um, more than anything else, and your insight. I think uh, I think you guys you you have a great perspective, um, and your willingness to share it is, uh, is truly an honor to, to be a part of. So thank you, Eric. Well, thanks hilarious. for having me on. It's, yeah. It's, uh, definitely been a good time and, uh, you're not too far away. So maybe hopefully as things open I'm up, telling you, I'll get yeah. down there to Minnesota sometime. Anytime you're in town. Anytime yeah. you're in town. You gotta you can... get your, you got to get yourself down to Rich Lewis's shop, man. Yes. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been there in quite a long time, but I did just pick up this uh, cellulose uh, yep. made in Denmark, a yep. state pipe from him. It posted on Instagram. I think this has, they're doing something with that new pipe club down there. I think it's the pig's eye. Money for something or, 
I'm a, yep, I'm a part of that club, actually. So I saw that pipe before it went to uh, Rich's shop. Um, <laughs> they, nice. uh, so one of our club members um, runs a food rescue nonprofit. So they rescue food that um, grocery stores and restaurants, you know, it's not necessarily expired food, but, you know, they have certain laws or rules yeah. or whatever where they have to kind of throw it out before and it's all good food so they go rescue that and then bring it to people who need to eat so um so rich decided to partner with them and our club um and it's you know it, as we kind of find some estate pipes and stuff like that that rich will put them in his shop and and if, if they sell then the the profits from that go to rescuing yep. food so. well i snapped this up and i'll tell you it's a uh, it was well worth the um the price it wasn't very expensive and it, it's great because it's it's big yeah but it's it's like less than 50 grams you can clench it easy it's a sandblast which i like a lot really yeah. nice pipe i'm really happy with it um i'm probably going to smoke this on my drive today when i go down to my dad's home there you so, go yeah, yeah really cool. stay tuned for a lot more of that I know uh, there's a few of us that are hunting for some estates that we're going to put in there and, and yeah. uh, so more posts to come, but yes, Rich, Rich, I'd love to do an interview with Rich uh, sometime. He doesn't, um, he doesn't like to show his face too much. So yeah, he's old right. school, man. Yeah. Uh, yep. guy knows what he's doing though. I, yes, he does. He's been making pipes for like almost 50 it, years yeah. and, uh, Anyway, yeah. I've had good interactions with them, and uh, uh, I got to get down there again. I haven't even I haven't been in there for years, but uh, cool, cool place. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, right. Eric, thank you. Have yeah, a thanks. safe tri uh, trip down to your dad's, and I'm sure we'll talk soon. And appreciate everyone uh, tuning in as well. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Bob, also, uh, Bob from Australia, even. So, yeah, I haven't been watching the chat at all, but I did you know, see a couple June of bug names in Germany, uh, Everett, yeah. uh, Victor from Chile, a lot of different ones. Oh, T Mate. T three Richardson, that's my buddy Tim. He lives in Tucson now. Me and him have been smoking pipes together for years. That's years, awesome. Years. So I told him about yeah. this. I'm glad he checked it out. Great. Well, thanks, Eric. We'll chat right. soon and have a great weekend. All right. Peace, man. Check you later. Peace. See yep. ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.